Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Bill Wyatt with the American Orthodontic Society. And I'm going to talk to you some this morning about the Herbst appliance. I never did use it, I think maybe a three or four times, but I did, never used it. It's been years ago. But the, this was a pretty important appliance and it would get popular and then people would get off of it and come back uh, over a period of time. And uh, I, I wanted to just explain a major problem that you have with any appliance where you advance the mandible. In other words, you, you've got the teeth, well, I'll have to use it this way, uh, like you have a class two c case, the lower teeth are back behind the upper teeth, and you advance the mandible. Now, if you have a depth of bite, uh, like when you have class two, a lot of times you'll have a deep bite or you can have a deep bite with a class one case, but not as much as class two. And then you start in and you advance the mandible out here with a Herbst appliance. And when you do that, you bite on your front teeth and your back teeth don't touch at all, see. So when you bite out here and your back teeth don't take the load, the load has to go on the joints, the temporal mandibular joints. And your muscle is back in this area, right over the second and third molars, and you're pulling your jaw forward and to get 10 pounds of force out here, you might have to press with 25 or 30 or more pounds of force back in this area. And that puts all this load onto your temporal mandibular joint. And it's on the disc. And you can damage the disc or uh, some people have such tough uh, discs that it doesn't bother them at all. And so most people uh, that use these uh, forward repositioning appliances. I don't care what it is. If you bring the jaw forward, uh, and I'm going to try to run through this Herbst appliance and explain uh, some of this, uh, and I hope you uh, will understand what, what I'm trying to, uh, the point I'm trying to get across. Now, uh, here, let's see, I have to get this going again. Now this is not a good, I just, uh, I went and took a course in the Herbst Appliance and I took a picture of the type of dot the people were uh, using and just showed it. This is a neat piece of machinery, if you want to call it that. And this is a tube coming across here. I, I don't have my little arrow well, let me get that over here. And uh, this is a tube. This portion is a tube. And then you have a heavy rod that goes inside this tube and goes up here. And you cut this tube off at where you want the jaw to come to. Now say this person came in and the lower front teeth were closing up right in this area and they advanced it out to here, then the whole jaw has to move in that that much distance of what it is here. Now, what pushes the jaw, keep, keeps the jaw pulling forward, is it, it, or being pushed forward, it actually pushes the upper jaw back in this direction. Now that backward movement of this jaw doesn't really hurt it too much, but you've got a fossa back here with a condyle up in the fossa, something like that. And when you move the jaw forward, the condyle moves down or it gets somewhere along in here, or it may come way on out to this portion if you advance the mandible a lot. Now, if you uh, wear this thing and you have to do your chewing, 
with it out in the front and you bite to eat your food with it, the muscles are in this area back here and the place where you're getting the force is out here. It's just like your arm, if you raise something up back here, the ligament on your arm down here is really putting a, a load on it. And uh, that is no joke. If you put too much force back in this area, you can damage the joint back here. I uh, used to water ski a lot, and you get, when you pull you out of the water, you're holding with the handles out here, and if you get pulled too hard, one morning I felt this ligament in my arm, I don't think where you can uh, see, <laughs> I'll have to get over here where you can see my arm, but it pulled the ligament, it, it tore it a little bit, and it was sore for about six months, uh, the ligaments hit, going back together. But anyway, any forward repositioning appliance, you bring the jaw out, and if you've got any depth of bite at all, this is the way it's made. Like if you want to bite something with your front teeth, you want to bite through a sandwich or something, you move your jaw out, and you can bite your teeth together, and my back teeth do not meet at all. So when I bite down like this, this jaw, the condyle is moving out here, and the weight is thrown from this area back to the joint, and all that force is on that little disc on both sides back here, and you can damage that disc, and most people are tough enough where you can advance their mandible and do things and they don't have any problem, but you get somebody with a uh, weak joint or weak tendency to do that and this will go wrong and many of them don't have any foggy idea what's causing it, you see. So what I am saying, if you advance the mandible, I've got some bad pictures here, but I'm going to show you. Here's this. This is not in focus. Here, this one looks better. You open your mouth, and your jaw won't go back. You see, this piston slides up in here, and the, the upper teeth are being pushed back as you push the lower jaw forward. As you bite down, you can't bite with your jaw back here. It has to come out this direction. And the upper is pushing it that way. So it's pushing the lower jaw back. I mean, the upper jaw back and the lower jaw forward. So they're excellent for correcting class two malocclusions. And people use that Carrier appliance. It hooks onto the molar back here and goes up and hooks onto the cuspid, and it holds the jaw in a forward position uh, back there. Well, I've got it backwards, the, uh, the thing hooks onto the, let me go back to this uh, picture that I started with. That hooks back here, and it goes out to the jaw, and it holds the jaw forward. Works on young kids and everything because they don't bite hard enough, but it brings the uh, jaw out and it puts a load on the jaw joint back here. It, it doesn't, I don't care what kind of plants you're using. If you advance the mandible and the bite is deep at all and you're bringing it out and you're putting a force right on the front teeth and the force then will be on the condyles pushing into the disc up here and you can start having trouble with the uh, disc. Uh, that's just the uh, way the mechanics is working in there. So we have to watch out if somebody starts hurting back there. What you could do 
is when you bring them forward, you could come in and put some acrylic cover over the back teeth so that when you're biting forward and you're, and you're biting forward with this thing all the time, then your teeth would have something where they would meet in this area and it would take the load off of your joint back here. And if you knew that and you could close, move them out here and put some soft acrylic just on the acrylic uh, on top of the occlusion surface, occlusal surface of the teeth and bite down on that and then smooth out everything except where the points of the teeth touch, then it wouldn't bother the teeth. I mean, the joint when you're close to because your load of the muscle force would be back here rather than in the anterior part and back here on the joint. Uh, that's something that uh, I would like to, everybody messing with their teeth ought to understand stuff about the jaw joint and you can create a problem back there and not have a foggy idea why you did it if you don't realize the condyle comes out here and you're putting all the weight on the condyle. It's in here and here, up here, when you buy it like that. Uh, I'm going to erase this and I'll go on it. I don't have any decent pictures of this. Uh, but here is the, it's a neat machine and you have to have the lower jaw, when you put a herpstic bronze in, you have a place up here where this uh, hinges off of this, and you have to have the teeth tied together. If you didn't, you push down here, you'd push these teeth out, and this, uh, your arch wire would just slide out of here. So the people that did it, they just pull the wire down back here so it can't come out, well, if something goes wrong with it and you have to take this uh, out, the only way you can fix it is to cut this wire off back here. Then it slides out. Now you can't keep it back there with this. It's better if you're using it, use that omega forming plier. We've got a whole video on that and the whole thing. You, you put an omega in here like that and you tie this back so that this arch wire can't come out. And if you've got both bands, uh, both teeth banded when you use that, you have to tie it from here back to the back and that holds this together. And then if you have to work on it, all you have to do is cut your tie and the whole thing will slide out of the mouth and you can come out here and work on uh, this por portion of the herbs to plants or anything you're advancing the mandible with. Uh, this is something that you have to just sit down about it and think. Now you have to have this arch wire tied back. You see it's got this bend in it so that uh, as the piston goes down in here, it pushes this one back to bring this one forward, the lower one forward. And if you don't have this arch wire tied back in here, you just shove this molar right back at, and you'd open a big gap in this area. So learning the herbs to plants, it works. It, uh, it'll move the jaw forward on most anybody. You put it on there. But if you didn't, you can come in if you have a deep bite. In other words, these teeth are further and they're locking over this and you pull your, this jaw out where these teeth are hitting and you've got a space in here that's something like that. If you put acrylic block on top of the lower teeth and then when you dip in for the cusps come down, cut this down but don't mess with the contact points. Now you bite and the load will go up this way and not back here on the jaw joint and the anterior teeth. And I, this is something everybody that screws around with teeth and messes around with it ought to understand that. And uh, they say, well, if I do orthodontics, 
uh, orthodontic that they have any effect. This is a big bunch of, uh, it, it's just a non-truth, that's what my kid calls it. Uh, non-truth. It is not. It's a big damn lie, though. That's what it is. Uh, you can mess with it, mess the joint up, mess it with the teeth and not know what the heck you're doing. And I'll show you several other situations in there. Well, the herpes appliance works. It does not make you grow a jaw out here. You take you put this appliance on a young kid and you'll advance about there in, a, in a, just a few months you can take this thing out and his jaw will just stay there for a while. But the deciduous teeth don't have any cusp on them and it'll slide back like it was. But what happens, your jaw would be like, let me uh, get something, it, uh, it, it, the corner of your jaw uh, the gonadal angle back here increases and that lets your jaw come forward and the head of the condyle which would come up in, in this part like here it will move back and the condyle will move back and say this much and, it, and it'll be back there. If you take it off and you don't have something that holds it there this will come back and this will go back and you the thing will to go back like it was to start with. So they don't work good unless you've got some uh, permanent teeth with pretty steep cusps and then you bring your jaw forward and the teeth, these cusps meet here, and that holds your jaw forward. So uh, this is more complicated than it uh, looks and I'm uh, sorry that it, uh, I, want people to understand why things go wrong with the jaw, jaw joint and why things can go wrong using the herpes appliance or it could go wrong with a carry appliance to anything that holds the jaw out like that. And uh, something that pushes the jaw forward and it, it, uh, the lower jaw forward and pushes back on the upper jaw, uh, it doesn't make any difference where you get it from. So I'm going to hush up and uh, uh, I, I hope I don't confuse people. Uh, I want you to understand orthodontics and understand that the joint and the straightening the teeth all goes together and you don't straighten teeth if you say well I don't have to worry about these Tim and TMJ problems if I have that I'll send that to somebody else you will not know what you're doing sometimes so learn about the jaw joint and the orthodontics and how you work with the teeth and it makes a d difference if you don't understand this problem right here. Thanks for watching and I'm going to close this out and I uh, hope that uh, people look at these blue videos and they flipping through like going through a catalog or something and they don't have a foggy idea of what you're talking about in them and what, what it is. If you really want to know orthodontics I want you to study these videos and I get letters from people who are all over the world and try to explain this and this is something if you're going to straighten teeth and you're going to do this you need to understand it and so you need to spend a little time trying to figure out what the heck I'm trying to talk about here. I know how to do it. But uh, getting it over to people is a very difficult job. Now I realize a lot of you know orthodontics, but there's a lot of people looking at this that uh, they're just getting into it. And I want you to do good orthodontics. Don't do any of this messed up stuff. So I hope to help people doing it.
wherever you are. I don't care what country, what nationality, what color your skin is, anything else. I want you to learn orthodontics, so I'm going to shut up and, and uh, close this out, and I'll say goodbye for the time being.